What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Tony D2 Wild checking in once again back with the bang of the day, guys. And today, we're talking about home defense shotguns. Now, guys, we have here today a Beretta 1301, which we're going to do a more in depth review on very, very, very soon. I've taken it out, put about 500 rounds through it, and I want to do a very in depth review on this piece of equipment right here. However, today's video, we're gonna be talking about the upgrades that were made to this shotgun for it to be, I guess you could say, home defense approved. And a lot of these upgrades are very easy to do, available to all you guys and girls out there. And if you guys want a more detailed breakdown of the upgrades made, check out my blog post on my website. We'll link it down below in the description where I break down pretty much everything in this video, but more in a text format. And by doing so, you also support this channel. So to start things off from tip to butt, as Grand Thumb would say, you know, salutes to him. We had to go ahead and put a light on this gun right here, okay? And the light in particular that we used was a Streamlight Protag. The Streamlight Protag is a very solid piece of equipment, very solid light out there, very, very nice reputation, and very affordable. This is definitely a good entry light you know, if you want to go to the surefires and all that you can, you're going to be spending a lot of money. But you got Streamlight. You also got Olight. But I think Streamlight has had a better reputation so far. And for the quality and build, it's A1. This one in particular is the HLX. And I think it's like the bigger version. There's smaller versions as well. You guys can see you got the push button. You got the dispressure. And you got the strobe right there on the back if you want to blind somebody. You feel me? I put this on the front of the gun. And it's put on with a Magpul cantilever or offset mount that starts here but extends it out a little bit further and i could actually put them on this clamp right here on the barrel clamp but i did not like the m-lock system on the barrel clamp because when putting the light on there it stuck out a little bit further away from the barrel when i really wanted it a little bit more snug i wanted more closer on the barrel for a more tight and compact you know look and just overall feel everything i just don't want my light to be out too far and it get hung up on something you feel me and to run this light you of course have the pressure switch when you buy the stream light it comes with these little rubber parts that go onto a picatinny rail which are fairly decent but at the same time are easily you know able to be knocked off so what i went with was a cloud defense slot that fits for the stream light and you can actually slide that in and screw it down and this thing it's not moving at all. And this goes on still by a Picatinny, which I had to put a little Picatinny section on this handguard here and then throw this on top and tighten it up. And now you got that, you got a good grip, you know, right here on the side, just boom, and you can actuate that light. Hopefully I'm saying that word, like you can turn the light on basically, you feel me? And then up here you got that. So you got everything right in the grasp of your hand when you're gripping the actual gun. I have the wiring going underneath the barrel and then pulled through out here on this side. Now you might be kind of, cautious or concerned that the wire might melt because this barrel does get hot well i decided to put thermal tape alongside with electrical tape wrapped up on this so that we don't have to worry about anything like that happening because believe it or not these guns actually cool down pretty fast they heat up fast but the barrel also kind of cools down pretty fast when shooting also on the top piece of course we have the qd slot here that is available right there on the barrel clamp that runs with the magpul sling very very important to have a sling on any type of weapon out there that you you know decide to really go the long distance with if you're gonna end up having it for something to be self-defense you just need something that can just sit there because holding a gun the whole time it can get very heavy you know and you might need your hands for other things out there you feel me so having the slings great and it's very adjustable i have the other magpul slings out there that don't have this specific padding this one has the padding and it's not expensive at all i think it's like maybe 20 30 bucks very 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 cheap and good quality not cheap as in bad just affordable i would say cheap is like you think it's like plastic affordable is like good you know but it's, it's yeah it's good it's good and then the gun came with the picatinny mount but i decided i wanted a red dot for quick acquisitions you feel me i want to be able to just to get on site very very fast so i went with the ferrotech mount which sits the mount very very low and allows you to put on you know for specifically on here we have the hollow sun 508 and there's other mounts for you know trigicons acros and all that the ferro tech for this one is for the hollow sun 508 i got a couple of hollow sun 508s i like them a lot i like them more than the c's the 407 c's they're nice as well don't get me wrong but i like the shape and i just like the build and the, the view on this one in particular and this co-witness with the iron sights you know there's people out there that say you don't need a red dot on a shotgun it's stupid 
use your irons. Well, technically speaking, they're all lined up together. So if the dot goes out, the irons are still there and there's no way the irons are gonna go out, but everything's all in unity at the end of the day. One thing we have here also is the handguard, which was swapped out from the original Beretta, which we'll talk about more as I stated in the full on in-depth review, but it just gives you way more M-lock slots going down the actual handguard because the actual Beretta 1301 has no M locks at all. I think it might have something on the bottom, but nothing. It's just, it's nothing. You really only have it up here. So it's kind of bad. There is the 300 Patrol, which is fairly new, a little bit newer than the 1301 that actually has an M lock slot up here, which is dope. The stock, of course, it came with. There's other type of stocks out there. You can go with Magpul stocks. This is called kind of a preference for you at the end of the day on what you prefer. I like pistol grip shotgun with stocks. That's just me personally. And another thing that I didn't really state beforehand, I had a KSG 12 gauge and it was a pump and I liked it. You know, it had some issues here and there where if you short stroked it, it wouldn't always feed properly. But it wasn't until I used the Panzer Arms in four and really had fun with that semi-automatic shotgun that I realized that this is the way. I like semi-automatic shotguns. I like the fact that I don't have to cock it every single time. I like the fact that it's just semi-automatic. Less that I have to worry about, less that I have to think about. And Beretta is just, the name, it speaks for itself. But there's nothing wrong with the pump shotgun. If that's what you got, go for it. The Mossbergs, there's tons of Mossbergs, really good company that makes great shotguns, reputable shotguns. There's other companies out there as well that have other ones. KSG is not a bad shotgun company, kill -Tech. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But I wanted to make a change and I feel good about the change. Definitely one of the, I guess, cons of the semi-automatic, which the pump also, I guess, features in a way, is this capacity. Shotguns just don't have a very high capacity. This one in particular holds seven in the tube, one in the chamber, and if you go slow, you can get an extra round, which gives you nine total. Now, with that being said, I have also a simple Velcro, just ammo little slouch right there or i forgot the name of this particularly but it's a, it's a shell holder you just throw it on there and you're just good to go and you know I'm, I'm, my ocd's kicking in i want it to be perfect so give me back so yeah this just gives me an extra six if need be i also which i think i could possibly use as an m-lock slot you can have that last shell holder that you could pretty much put your thumb down and slide it in when the bolt goes open hold on there's like boom 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 you're shooting shoot shooting you're empty and then there's like a little thing you could slide it in and then go like that and go back to town bam so that is another option that I might add on down the road. But really, man, when it comes to this, you want a light. The red dot is a plus, which I would definitely recommend. Sling is a must required, light required. And uh, that's, you know, some of the big pointers here. Now, as far as ammo goes, me personally right now, currently what I have in here is a, uh, I think this is a double buck. Yeah, double buck. Um, you got slugs, birdshot, double buck, all that, right? Right now, currently, which is in here, like I stated before, is double buck. And there's some, you know, pretty big size bulls. I think double buck is like, um, I think a 30 cal, cal, like 30 caliber or like a, the, it's very close to what the size of a nine millimeter. And correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. I'm not perfect when it comes to this particular, the double buck size. There's double buck, there's buck, there's zero buck. There's like so many different shot size when it comes to shotgun. And of course you got the big daddy slug. Now slugs I would not use in a house or anywhere because I'll just be in fear of over penetration. And there's even some, you know, cautious between whether or not double buck will penetrate through drywall and all that. More than likely, a lot of things you're gonna shoot is gonna do that. What I would say though is what I've tried recently and I kinda like, and I think I might turn to that more as I do some more research, is number four buck, four buck shot. It's a little bit smaller than this, but not too small. It's not small like bird. It's a good medium in the middle side that I don't feel like it would over penetrate anything, but at the same time, it's it does what it needs to do, you feel me? And this is all self-defense, okay? We're just talking self-defense and we're talking bullet science, okay? This though is nice. Feel free if you're in the chat, in the comments to correct me, give me some advice, your thoughts on double buck. I've been shooting tons of bird shot, had a great time with that as well. You know, the spread on that is in insane, but at you know close range, it's still pretty bad. Double buck, this, and like I stated before, number four buck shot. I don't think I actually, got in the upstairs i think it's all downstairs i was shooting it recently recently picked it up it was pretty affordable too and like i said it had a good size to it maybe i could show a chart or something but yeah guys we have here my home defense shotgun build i love to hear you guys thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section and stay tuned because we have a full on in-depth review 
on the Beretta 1301 coming for you guys and girls very, very soon. We're gonna take it out and just go to work, you know, 500 rounds or something like that. I'm out, peace.